Hello, and thank you for joining us in our study of the book of Psalms. Today we're in Psalm 90, and I'm sorry for not having videos posted over the last week. I was out of town and unable to accomplish it, but it's good to be back and getting with our study again today. In Psalm 90, we begin what is called generally Book 4 of the Psalms. The Psalms are divided up into five different books or five different collections. Psalm 90 is the start of Book 4. And in this particular Psalm, we have a couple of major distinctions from much of the rest of the Psalms. The first one is in the author of the Psalm. This is not going to be written by David or Asaph or the sons of Korah or any of those that we become accustomed to seeing. Rather, this is going to be a psalm that is written by Moses. And with that psalm of Moses, it is going to be significantly older than many of the other uh, psalms that are going to be written. Most of them come from the days of David and Solomon. And so with that, there's going to be a difference in a bit of the perspective of some of the things that are going to be said. And yet the lesson of Psalm 90 is going to be on the, the nature and the outlook of God in comparison to that of man. So let's look at what Moses has to say in Psalm 90. Beginning in verse number one, we read, Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn man to destruction and say, Return, O children of men. For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past, and like a watch in the night. You carry them away like a flood. They are like a sleep. In the morning, they are like grass which grows up. In the morning, it flourishes and grows up. In the evening, it is cut down and withers. For we have been consumed by your anger, and by your wrath we are terrified. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your countenance. For all our days have passed away in your wrath. We finish our years like a sigh. The days of our lives are seventy years, and if by reason of strength they are eighty years, yet their boast is only labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. Who knows the power of your anger? For as the fear of you, so is your wrath. So teach us to number our days, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long, and have compassion on your servants. O oh, satisfy us early with your mercy, that we may rejoice and be made glad all our days. Make us glad according to the days in which you have afflicted us, the years in which we have seen evil. Let your work appear to your servants and your glory to their children, and let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us, and establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. As you look at Psalm 90, there are a lot of things that we could pull out from this particular psalm, but I want us to look at just a couple of them. When you look at Psalm 90, you have Moses speaking concerning a time of hardship. There are several who think that this was written during the 40 years of wandering in the wilderness or toward the end of those 40 years of wandering in the wilderness. But one of the things that Moses emphasizes is the fact that to God, a thousand years are like a day in his sight, or actually, as he says, like yesterday it, when it is past. The emphasis of this, there are a lot of people who try to take this phrase and a couple from the New Testament that are similar to it in a literal sense. Moses here is not saying that a thousand years are a day to God, and that therefore that's some sort of reference point to be able to add a bunch of things together to calculate various things. What he's using is a figure of speech. 
he is using this principle of saying that to God, a thousand years are as though yesterday has already passed. What he means is, time means absolutely nothing to God. God does not exist and God does not work within the frameworks of the time that binds us. He is completely outside of that framework. And so God is able to look at the things that are happening in the future as though they have already happened. And he looks at the things of the past as though they happened yesterday, even though they might have happened 2,000 years ago. The point that Moses is making is not to give definitive timetables on the way that God looks at life and the way that God looks at time, but rather to talk about the way that God deals with man's failures and man's indiscretions. He says God, in verse 3, calls for man to return, O children of men. And you carry them away like a flood, verse 5. In other words, God isn't going to forget the transgressions of men. You know, a lot of times with mankind, the longer the time passes away from the event, the more man forgets about it. That's not the way God works. You can go a thousand years into the future, and to God it's like the yesterday for us that just passed. There are things that are seen by God, and the way that God sees things is not the same as we do. And that's the point that Moses is trying to make. And so when you're looking at God's relationship with us, you look at it from the standpoint of time and, and those kinds of things, and you recognize that it is the reason that God knows what we're going to do, knows the choices we're going to make. It doesn't change our free will. It doesn't change whether or not we have the ability to make those choices. But God is not bound by time in what he sees. It's a very confusing and very difficult concept. I get that. But that's the point that Moses is making. However, we are bound by time. We are bound by the number of our years and, and the time that we have on this earth. And that leads Moses into his second point. Because he's going to talk about the fact that the days of our lives, verse 10, are 70 years. And if by reason of strength that they are 80 years, yet their boast is only labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. The time of our lives is numbered on this earth. Moses says, we're doing good if we get 70 to 80 years by reason of strength, by reason of the strength of our, of our physical bodies. And certainly those same numbers still hold true today. But notice the point that he makes in verse 12. He says, so teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Our goal should be to use every day to its fullest because they're a limited number that we have. Teach us to number them. Teach us to recognize the value and the importance of every day. So many days in our lives go to waste because we always think we have tomorrow or we think we have a set number of days down the road. We don't. Teach us to number our days, to realize what is important. And notice the end of the phrase, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. When you look at Psalm 90, Psalm 90 is about the way that God looks at things in comparison to man. God's judgments and God's justice in all of these different areas are not bound by the barriers that oftentimes we want to put in place. We think that if somebody doesn't receive a punishment right in the moment that it happens, it didn't, God didn't see it or God doesn't care. That's simply not the case. But in all things, he is God. And when it comes to his relationship with us, he's not bound by time. But we are in this physical world. And as such, we have to be sure we are using our time wisely. These are some of the things that I see in Psalm 90. I hope that they are beneficial to you. 
Next time, we'll come back and we will begin looking at Psalm 91. Thank you for joining us for the video today. I hope you'll join us again next time. But until then, have a great day.